Born on the 1st of January 1944 in northern Sudan, Omar al-Bashir was the son of a farmer. He joined the Sudanese army at the age of 16 and quickly rose through the ranks. It was in the midst of civil war that al-Bashir seized power from Prime Minister Sadiq al-Mahdi on the 30th of June 1989. As colonel, he was well placed to lead what was a bloodless military coup. Four years later, Omar al-Bashir declared himself president. The Sudanese leader inherited a country torn by conflict on all sides. A civil war raged between Arab Muslim tribes in the north and Christian rebels in the south. And in 2004, an insurgency erupted in the western region of Darfur. Al-Bashir ordered the army to quell the revolt. But the UN also accused him of backing the Janjaweed, pro-government Arab militias that killed, raped and mutilated thousands of civilians. The Darfur conflict left about 300,000 people dead and some 3 million displaced. For his role, Omar al-Bashir became the first sitting head of state indicted for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. He denied the charges. Their goal is to stop development in Sudan. They're trying to distract us, to keep us distracted with their cases and their accusations, but we will not be distracted. In 2005, the government signed a peace deal to end the civil war, leading to an independence referendum in 2011. The South Sudanese voted overwhelmingly to break away, and so, under Omar al-Bashir, the country split in two. Our relationship with the newborn state in the south will be based on respecting the pledges and on maintaining the deep-rooted emotional links between us and our brothers in the south. The resulting loss of three-quarters of its oil revenue crippled the Sudanese economy, ultimately spelling the downfall of his government.